It happened that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, so that he could not see, he called Esau his elder son and said to him, My son? He said to him, Here I am. He said, See now, I am old. I don't know the day of my death. Now, therefore, please take your weapons, your quiver and your bow, and go out to the field and take me venison. Make me savory food such as I love and bring it to me, that I may eat, and that my soul may bless you before I die. Rebekah heard when Isaac spoke to Esau his son. Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. Rebekah spoke to Jacob her son, saying, Behold, I heard your father speak to Esau your brother, saying, Bring me venison, and make me savory food that I may eat, and bless you before the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command you. Go now to the flock, and get me from there two good kids of the goats. I will make them savory food for your father such as he loves. You shall bring it to your father that he may eat, so that he may bless you before his death. Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, Esau my brother is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. What if my father touches me? I will seem to him as a deceiver, and I would bring a curse on myself and not a blessing. His mother said to him, Let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go get them for me. He went and got them, and brought them to his mother. His mother made savory food such as his father loved. Rebekah took the good clothes of Esau, her elder son, which were with her in the house, and put them on Jacob, her younger son. She put the skins of the kids of the goats on his hands and on the smooth of his neck. She gave the savory food and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. He came to his father and said, My father? He said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done what you asked me to do. Please arise, sit, and eat of my venison, that your soul may bless me. Isaac said to his son, How is it that you found it so quickly, my son? He said, Because the Lord your God gave me success. Isaac said to Jacob, Please come near that I may feel you, my son, whether you are really my son Esau or not. Jacob went near to Isaac his father. He felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He didn't recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. He said, Are you really my son Esau? He said, I am. He said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless you. He brought it near to him, and he ate. He brought him wine, and he drank. His father Isaac said to him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. He came near and kissed him. He smelled the smell of his clothing and blessed him and said, Behold, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. God give you of the dew of the sky, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and new wine. Let peoples serve you, nations bow down to you, be Lord over your brothers, let your mother's sons bow down to you, cursed be every one who curses you, blessed be every one who blesses you. It happened as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob had just gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. He also made savory food and brought it to his father. He said to his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison, that your soul may bless me. Isaac his father said to him, Who are you? He said, I am your son, your firstborn Esau. Isaac trembled violently and said, Who then is he who has taken venison and brought it to me, and I have eaten all of it before you came, and have blessed him? Yes, he will be blessed. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceeding great and bitter cry, and said to his father, Bless me, even me also, my father. He said, Your brother came with deceit, and has taken away your blessing. He said, Isn't he rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright. See, now he has taken away my blessing. He said, Haven't you reserved a blessing for me? Isaac answered Esau, Behold, I have made him your Lord and all his brothers I have given to him for servants. With grain and new wine have I sustained him. 
What then will I do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, Have you but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, my father. Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Isaac his father answered him, Behold, of the fatness of the earth will be your dwelling, and of the dew of the sky from above. By your sword will you live, and you will serve your brother. It will happen when you will break loose, that you shall shake his yoke from off your neck. Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father blessed him. Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. The words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah. She sinned and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, Behold, your brother Esau comforts himself about you by planning to kill you. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice. Arise, flee to Laban, my brother, in Haran. Stay with him a few days until your brother's fury turns away, until your brother's anger turn away from you, and he forgets what you have done to him. Then I will send and get you from there. Why should I be bereaved of you both in one day? Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob takes a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these, of the daughters of the land, what good will my life do me? It happened, when Jesus had finished all these words, that he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders of the people were gathered together in the court of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas. They took counsel together that they might take Jesus by deceit and kill him. But they said, Not during the feast, lest a riot occur among the people. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him having an alabaster jar of very expensive ointment, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when his disciples saw this, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. But Jesus, knowing this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? Because she has done a good work for me. For you always have the poor with you, but you don't always have me. For in pouring this ointment on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Most assuredly, I tell you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be spoken of as a memorial of her. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me that I should deliver him to you? They weighed out for him thirty pieces of silver. From that time he sought opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying to him, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain person and tell him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. The disciples did as Jesus commanded them, and they prepared the Passover. Now when evening had come, he was reclining at the table with the twelve disciples. As they were eating, he said, Most assuredly, I tell you, that one of you will betray me. They were exceedingly sorrowful, and each began to ask him, It isn't me, is it, Lord? He answered, He who dipped his hand with me in the dish, the same will betray me. The Son of Man goes, even as it is written of him, but woe to that man through whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who betrayed him, answered, It isn't me, is it, Rabbi? He said to him, You said it. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks for it, and broke it. He gave to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. He took the cup, gave thanks, and gave to them, saying, All of you drink it, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the remission of sins. 
But I tell you that I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me tonight, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter answered him, Even if all will be made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. Jesus said to him, Most assuredly I tell you that tonight, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. All of the disciples also said likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and said to his disciples, Sit here while I go there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and severely troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went forward a little, fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass away from me. Nevertheless, not what I desire, but what you desire. He came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Couldn't you watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you don't enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again a second time he went away and prayed, saying, My father, if this cup can't pass away from me unless I drink it, your desire be done. He came again and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. He left them again, went away, and prayed a third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Arise, let's be going. Behold, he who betrays me is at hand. While he was still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude, with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he who betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whoever I kiss, he is the one, seize him. Immediately he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, why are you here? Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and struck off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place for all those who take the sword will die by the sword. Or do you think that I couldn't ask my father, and he would even now send me more than twelve legions of angels? How then would the scripture be fulfilled that it must be so? In that hour Jesus said to the multitudes, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? I sat daily in the temple teaching, and you didn't arrest me. But all this has happened, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had taken Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were gathered together. But Peter followed him from a distance to the court of the high priest and entered in and sat with the officers to see the end. Now the chief priest, the elders, and the whole council sought false testimony against Jesus that they might put him to death, and they found none. But at last two false witnesses came forward and said, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said to him, Have you no answer? What is this that these testify against you? But Jesus held his peace. The high priest answered him, I adjure you by the living God that you tell us whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said it. Nevertheless, I tell you, Henceforth you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of the sky. Then the high priest tore his clothing, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Behold, now you have heard his blasphemy. What do you think? They answered, He is worthy of death. Then they spit in his face and beat him with their fist, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ, who hit you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the court, and a maid came to him, saying, You were also with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I don't know what you are talking about. 
When he had gone out onto the porch, someone else saw him and said to those who were there, This man also was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those who stood by came and said to Peter, Surely you are also one of them, for your speech makes you known. Then he began to curse and to swear, I don't know the man. Immediately the cock crowed. Peter remembered the word which Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and wept bitterly. Chapter 3 After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, and advance him, and set his seat above all the princes who were with him. All the king's servants who were in the king's gate bowed down and did reverence to Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai didn't bow down nor do him reverence. Then the king's servants who were in the king's gate said to Mordecai, why do you disobey the king's commandment? Now it came to pass, when they spoke daily to him, and he didn't listen to them, that they told Haman, to see how Mordecai's matter would turn out, for he had told them he was a Jew. When Haman saw that Mordecai didn't bow down, nor do him reverence, then Haman was full of wrath. But he scorned the thought of laying hands on Mordecai alone, for they had made known to him the people of Mordecai. Therefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews who were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. In the first month, which is the month Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast Pur, that is the lot, before Haman from day to day, and from month to month, to the twelfth month, which is the month Adar. Haman said to King Ahasuerus, there is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the peoples in all the provinces of your kingdom, and their laws are different from those of every people. Neither do they keep the king's laws. Therefore it is not for the king's profit to allow them to live. If it please the king, let it be written that they be destroyed, and I will pay ten thousand talents of silver into the hands of those who have charge of the king's business to bring it into the king's treasuries." The king took his ring from his hand and gave it to Haman, the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, the Jew's enemy. The king said to Haman, The silver is given to you, the people also, to do with them as it seems good to you. Then were the king's scribes called in the first month, on the thirteenth day, and there was written according to all that Haman commanded to the king's satraps, and to the governors who were over every province, and to the princes of every people to every province according to the writing of it, and to every people after their language. In the name of King Ahasuerus was it written, and it was sealed with the king's ring. Letters were sent by post into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even on the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. A copy of the writing, that the decree should be given out in every province, was published to all the peoples, that they should be ready against that day. The post went out in haste by the king's commandment, and the decree was given out in Shushan the palace. The king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city of Shushan was perplexed. Agrippa said to Paul, You may speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and made his defense. I thank myself happy, King Agrippa, that I am to make my defense before you this day concerning all the things whereof I am accused by the Jews, especially because you are expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Therefore I beg you to hear me patiently. Indeed, all the Jews know my way of life from my youth up, which was from the beginning among my own nation and at Jerusalem. 
having known me from the first, that they are willing to testify that after the strictest sect of our religion I lived a Pharisee. Now I stand here to be judged for the hope of the promise made by God to our fathers, which our twelve tribes, earnestly serving night and day, hope to attain. Concerning this hope I am accused by the Jews, King Agrippa. Why is it judged incredible with you if God does raise the dead? I myself most assuredly thought that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. This I also did in Jerusalem. I both shut up many of the saints in prison, having received authority from the chief priest, and when they were put to death I gave my vote against them. Punishing them often in all the synagogues, I tried to make them blaspheme. Being exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. Whereupon, as I journeyed to Damascus, with the authority and commission from the chief priest at noon, O king, I saw on the way a light from the sky, brighter than the sun, shining around me and those who traveled with me. When we had all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. I said, Who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus whom you persecute. But arise and stand on your feet. For to this end have I appeared to you, to appoint you a servant and a witness, both of the things which you have seen, and of the things which I will reveal to you, delivering you from the people, and from the Gentiles to whom I send you, to open their eyes, that they may turn from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive remission of sins, and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to them of Damascus, at Jerusalem, and throughout all the country of Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God, doing works worthy of repentance. For this reason the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. Having therefore obtained the help that is from God, I stand to this day testifying both to small and great, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses did say should come, how the Christ must suffer, and how he first, by the resurrection of the dead, should proclaim light both to these people and to the Gentiles. As he thus made his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are crazy. Your great learning is driving you insane. But he said, I am not crazy, most excellent Festus, but boldly declare words of truth and reasonableness. For the king knows of these things, to whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things is hidden from him, for this has not been done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you believe. Agrippa said to Paul, With a little persuasion are you trying to make me a Christian? Paul said, I pray to God that whether with little or with much, not only you, but also all that hear me this day, might become such as I am except for these bonds. The king rose up with the governor and with Bernice, and those who sat with them. When they had withdrawn, they spoke to one another, saying, This man does nothing worthy of death or of bonds. Agrippa said to Festus, This man might have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. 